welcome back to my channel so today's video we are going to talk about how JNRAM can be used uh, to perform single sign-on in Salesforce so let's say <clears throat> so I have my Salesforce org it is a developer org and I have enabled my domain already which is Jitendra 21 so first step we have to do is we have to go to auth provider which would be in identity auth providers now salesforce has a lot of out of the box auth providers like github google twitter now the interested which we are is genrem so we have to choose genrem we can provide some name but name can be let's say demo sso URL suffix keep it at is the important part is consumer secret. So what we have to do to get the consumer secret is you have to go to your Jendren app and you can create a new app. Now I have, I already have a new app here. So all I have to you can click actually here new property. So but I already have created. So I will go in a setting and the consumer secret so anyways i'm going to share everything and then i would delete so that's fine if i sharing my consumer secret with you so go on the settings section so if you see we have analytics provider settings widgets and sdk and people first let's go on setting and edit it and you will see a list of all the information information which is important for us is api key which is a secret I will reset it after this demo so what you can do is you can copy this and paste it here and then select the system admin here for in which context it will execute and then you can see you can select this which says automatically create an apex class which would be used as registration handler and then let's sit and save it uh, I don't have any portal here I do have a community and we don't have any extra setup for the community so that's all for this and you can save it now i already have one so let me open this for uh, general and providers as you can see once you save everything you will have a list of urls provided by salesforce the url which is important for us is actually this one single sign on callback url and this is the url which we would use so just keep a note of this url one important configuration we have to do in a genren is to whitelist our my domain so i have whitelisted my domain within the 21 dev also i have whitelisted the visual force my domain just in case and all you have to do is save once you are done then you can come back in genren and you can set up a multiple providers now in my case i have set up facebook yahoo and twitter uh, you can go go ahead here click on edit providers choose so there are tons of providers available like microsoft i see very sign foursquare salesforce also here so choose any one of the provider follow the on-screen instruction so let's say if i want to choose the google plus you all have to do is follow this instruction click next and it's a very user friendly uh, i don't see you would be having any issue here so that's all about providers i have configured few provider already i will go back and uh, provider is here uh, everything is here let's talk about uh, widgets and sdk so you have to so how uh, this is different single sign on for generation is different is we have my domain let's say if you enable the my domain if you set up a single sign on in salesforce uh, every single sign on or most of the single sign on rather i will say would appear here saying okay do you want to authenticate using login or do you want to authenticate let's say by azure and so on if you see genren is not appearing here because genren works a little bit different general like here genren itself can provide you a multiple identity provider social website so in this case i have five widgets what genren says that you have to get the code 
I will come to back. I will come back to that point. So if you get the code, user should be able to click one of these buttons. That means we need some public website where we can simply copy paste this information, and user would be able to use that public website to log in. So what I have done in my case is I have enabled a public site. So Salesforce does provide out of the box. Uh, sorry, it's a paid one on my developer account. It is available. I have few community, but then I have one public site name as SSO study. And what I have done is I have created a Visual Force page. So this is my Visual Force page. And I have added some line uh, for a reminder myself. And then what I did is I copy pasted a code from Genren. So what you have to do is go on lay go on layout select all of the provider which you need if you want you can click on launch a test widget it's fine and it will give you the test widget and if you go back click on the get the code all you can do is copy paste this javascript you have to place this div tag the only thing you have to remember is, is this JavaScript code is saying that we have to set this property, which is a generate.setting token URL equals to, and we have to replace this URL, this text. So, like I said previously, if we go on our auth providers, and I will go on my setup, you see uh, this URL I was talking about, which is important, we have to copy this URL and paste that URL here and that's all we are done what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can preview I am already signing so it is giving me all the option so <clears throat> the important thing here is uh, what will happen if I will try to sign on now say Generen will give you uh, the output uh, or I will say the response in the JSON format, but Generen will not know that who is logging from the social media. Is it a Jikendra Jha or someone else? So we have to write our custom Apex Handler class. So this is the auto created registration handler. If you remember, we said that, okay, let's create auto registration. Now, this handler class contains two methods, but very important. One method name is create user and another method name is update user. Anyone who is trying to log in very first time would have would execute a create user. And once I'm logged in every every time after that, update user would be used by Salesforce. So this this method is going to be used only first time to establish the relationship between the user and a social account. So let me show you something here. Uh, which will be a little bit easier to understand. So if I go on the list of the users, and let's say that's me. Sorry. <clears throat> so in this user related list, if you see here, uh, third party account links. Now, third party is not linked with me. So if I try to log in by the third party, Salesforce will always use the create user method. If the relationship is established between third party and my user account, then Salesforce will always use update user method. Now update user method, you can keep either as a blank. In my case, it is blank. Or let's say if you need to have some logic, you can add some extra logic here. So the question is, let's say if I'm logging through, let's say Yahoo, Twitter, Facebook, okay, how, if I log in using this, Salesforce will execute registration handler. Now in create method, you have to decide the logic that how Salesforce is going to relate this Facebook account or this Twitter account with your account. Now this is something very custom that you have to think about it. Now what I did in my case is I have created a custom object. Let me go here. I have created a custom object name as a user social accounts. And I will open my setup again. <clears throat> now here, if you see, 
uh, I have created a one record name. Okay, let me do one thing. I will simply delete this and I will delete this as well. And I'm going to log in, let's say using Yahoo. So what will happen is I'm creating a new record and I'm saying that Jitendra Jha has a Yahoo account and the unique identifier is the email of Jitendra Jha, which is this one, very old, around 10, my college time email, yahoo.in. So now it is saying that Jitendra Jha has a social account, which and unique identifier for that account is this. Okay, let's have again, saying same Jitendra Jha, have a Twitter account and unique identifier, let's say, is this. And again, this information is only going to be used first time. So that's all. I have added a to record. If you see the registration handler method, I'm saying that, okay, I get the identifier. I'm going to extract the identifier. Now, there are different, different type of social account we have configured, and that means that response is not going to be exactly the same. So you have to extract the identifier with your own custom way. What I have done is created a small method. Yahoo identifier directly comes in email, email so no brain here. But let's say if it is null, that means it's not Yahoo. We have to write a custom logic for Twitter. I have not written any logic for Facebook yet, but the for the Twitter, you will get the information in the preferred username, saying preferred username equals to Jitendra Shah. Simply what I'm doing is, I'm removing the preferred username from that line and whatever left is my uh, Twitter account. I'm just removing uh, trailing white spaces. And once I get the information here, all I'm doing is a SQL. So let's say it's a Twitter account. Let's say the Yahoo account on the basis of this custom object, this record we have created, I will get, oh, this Twitter belongs to, let's say, this user, because my user ID is already here, this user. All I have to do is, I have to tell Salesforce that, okay, this new record is for this user, and that's it. Let's see how it works. And again, just to remind you, my user record, in my user record, I have uh, third party account links as a blank. Let's see how it is going to happen. What's going to happen now? I can run in, in Icaginto mode, but let's run in here only. So I'm clicking on Yahoo. It is asking me to sign on. I'm signing in. I have my authenticator app. And let me approve it in my mobile saying yes it's approved click on agree <clears throat> my logic would execute here i'm successfully logged in that's a great let's go on user refresh this and now you see the third party account link is yahoo now, if I try to use Yahoo again, Salesforce already know that Yahoo belongs to me because of third party account link and Salesforce will always execute update user. Now, Salesforce is not going to execute this until we are going to go back on account and revoke it. If we revoke it, that means Salesforce does not have any information that this third party account is linked to which user and Salesforce is going to execute that method again. That's great. Let's try again. And this time, let's try with Twitter. So switch account, Twitter. Okay. Approved. My logic is working here. If I go back here, if you see third party account is only Yahoo, not Twitter, let's reload it. And as you can see, Twitter is also here. So that's all uh, for today's session. Uh, we saw that how Jendrian can be used as a single sign-on for Salesforce using various social accounts and 
how the Apex registration handler works, what do we have to set up in Genren, and how the widgets and everything works. So that's all uh, for today's session. Thank you so much for joining my session. Uh, please feel free to provide your feedback and comment. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.